Hello, my friends. Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Man Cave. TGIF. It is Friday, March 22nd, 2024. In case you're watching this 20 years from now. <laughs> uh, I, uh, you know, I've been saying I've been avoiding other people's songs. But I ran across this song again this morning. I saw it on YouTube and uh, clicked on it and decided to play this one for you. I haven't played this in f four or five years. It's been that long. And this is one of the hardest songs that I do. I mean, it's a difficult song. You'll see why here in a minute <laughs> after I screw it up. Um, I'm doing it in the key of C. Uh, this doggone microphone is really difficult to put it. I need it up high. And then if I, you know, it's just like, where do you put this? It's uh, not working real well, but I'll, I'll try to do it here. And that way you can see my hand. So there's C, F, and there's a G. C, F, and G, which would be your one, four, five. And then there's a, um, a D minor in it also. I think that's all. I think that's all there is, if I remember, right? goes like this said red molly to james that's a fine motorbike a girl could feel special on any such like said james to red molly my hat's off to you it's a vincent black lightning 1952 and i seen you at the corner of the cafe it seems red hair and black leather my favorite color schemes then he pulled her on behind and down to knoxville they did ride said james to red molly here's a ring for your right hand and i'll tell you in truth it's i'm a dangerous man I fought with the law since I was 17 And I robbed many a man to get my Vincent machine Now I'm 21 years, I might make 22 And I don't mind dying but for the love of you But if they should break my stride Then I'll give you my Vincent to ride Sergeant McRae, they've taken young James A.D. for armed robbery. Shotgun blast hit his chest, left nothing inside. Come down, Red Molly, to his dying bedside. When she got to the hospital, there wasn't much left. He was running out of road, he was running out of breath. But he smiled to see her cry. Said I'll give you my Vincent to ride. Said James, in my opinion, there's nothing in this world beats a '52 Vincent and a red-headed girl. Now Nortons and Indians and Greasies won't do. They don't have the soul of the Vincent '52. Well, he reached for her hand and he slipped her the keys. He said, I don't have any further use for these. I see angels on aerials in leather and chrome jumping down to heaven to carry me home. Then he gave her one less kiss and he died. But he gave her his Vincent to ride. That was easier 10 years ago. <laughs> that is a tough song. There's a whole bunch of words in there. 
<laughs> it's long. There's nothing that repeats. Everything's new. You just keep going and going and going. And I can't believe I remembered it. See, that just to prove I just did that to prove to myself I still don't I don't have Alzheimer's yet. Or maybe it is Alzheimer's because they say you can remember the things in your latter years. <laughs> no, it's the other way around. You can remember things from your earlier years. Well, this was ten years ago, so maybe maybe Alzheimer's hit after that. I don't know, but it, I got through it. At least I got the, all the words right. I kind of missed a chord or two there, or it was slow on the chords at least. That's not an easy song. Gary, he, I think Gary hates it when I do that song because it's, it's so long, you know, and it, it's fast, and Gary doesn't really care to play too fast. All <laughs> so, anyway, you know how it is. You got those little uh, riffs in your in your group. Well... I don't have very much planned for today. Um, by the way, that was the auction mandolin again, still. I really do like playing this mandolin. It's a pretty cool mandolin. Um, the uh, auction prices are staying stable. They haven't changed at all. So uh, somebody's going to get good buys on instruments, it looks like. The... Um, I just have a couple little minor things. While I was, you know, yesterday all day, the reason I don't have much planned for today is because all day yesterday, and I'm talking the moment I got off the vlog yesterday till 7 o'clock last night, with the exception of two hours for lunch and about 30 minutes for supper, with that exception, I was editing that new video. And I still got... The last twenty some minutes to go through, um, at uh, you know for the second draft to get through it. I I always go through every video twice, um, minimum sometimes three or four times, but at least twice. So I've got to go through the last twenty some minutes uh, one more time yet, and that last twenty some minutes is going to take me a minimum of an hour, and it might take longer than that. So, so I've still got to get through that. And then what my plan is, is to debut it live this evening at about 7 o'clock or maybe 7.15. I might have to make it 7.15 because uh, i got to put the ducks away. Sue's leaving this afternoon to go pick up the boys or meet the boys in Illinois. And she usually puts her ducks away. And they don't come in until pretty darn dark. So... <laughs> This, re this reminds me, you know, you're planning around a duck like that. I, I have to tell you a phone call. Since a lot of you watch my son's channel, uh, you know, Homestead Horsemanship, and you know he's married to Emery. Well, when they were first dating, <laughs> I don't know if I should tell this. I that This still, of all the phone calls I've ever received in my whole life, this is the one I remember. <laughs> I'd probably never forget it. So, you know, they're dating and she's here at the farm uh, and they're running around doing some stuff. You know, this is way before they bought their farm over here. This is, you know, we, the only farm we had was this farm. So, I don't know. They were out playing around with horses or dogs or something or riding four wheelers. I don't know what they were doing. But I get this panicked phone call. <laughs> And it's it's Renee. You know, Renee ended up being my bass player in the band there for years. And uh, uh, but she was panicked. She's going, "Is is Emery there? Is Emery there? Can, I need to talk to Emery." I'm going, "Oh uh, well, uh, they're out here somewhere, riding around on a four wheeler or something." <laughs> you could tell she was really in. I said, "Is there an emergency?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's. I said, "Okay, let me go find." <laughs> So I couldn't find him. And I said, well, I'm sorry. I can't find her. Do, can I give her a message or something? And, and she says, yeah, tell her to come home. I need her to milk the goat. <laughs> I never will forget that phone call as long as I live. I, <laughs> I need her to milk the goat. There was something to do with a baby goat or something. And they needed milk for the baby goat or something. And Emery was the only one that knew how to get it to happen make it happen i don't know what was what the problem was but anyway i thought that was very funny <laughs> that was an emergency milk the goat i don't know how i got off on that but uh anyway um i guess it was because i was telling you you know uh, uh well i don't even know why <laughs> i've lost my train of thought 
anyway, that video took up all day yesterday, and uh, I will try to get that out uh, this evening. Oh, I was because I was putting the ducks away, and I thought it was so important. I'm scheduling around putting ducks away. It's kind of like such an important phone call. Milk, come home and milk the milk the goat. Uh, anyway, um, while I was thinking this morning, I thought, well, maybe I'll find something I can at least show you around here that would be different. Maybe I haven't shown before. So here's, here's a few crafts that I did back in the 70s. And uh, one of these I did show once before, I know. The, uh, the picture on, the, on uh, the left of the screen there is some birds that I drew. You know, keep in mind, I'm colorblind. So to me, pencil drawings was always what I like to do. I like to do pencil drawings because, you know, I'm not big into the color thing. That painting I have back on the wall back there, it's watercolors. And I do okay with colors, I think, but I'm not great at it. So drawing in pencil was what I always liked to do. That was drawn in 77, um, I, is what the date on it says. And then the cabinet to the right there, back in the 70s also, I made a lot of those cabinets uh, and sold them. And those are the kinds of things I did to support my woodworking habit and, and to buy more tools and equipment. So I would make things like that. I made uh, fireplace mantles for people. Uh, I made a lot of those cabinets, knick-knack cabinets, and sold them. And back in the 70s, stuff like that was cool, you know. Now these things are relegated to this room out here that we don't use anymore. <laughs> so nobody ever sees them, and we don't use them. And it's just hanging on the wall there with nothing in it. Here's another little uh, <clears throat> uh, thing that you might find interesting that I hope I'll get to one of these days. See that radio there? That's a large Zenith radio. And uh, that belonged to my grandmother. And she lived on uh, uh, Lafayette Avenue down in downtown St. Louis area. She had a large, or a, one of those, um, I don't know, like a three-family flat or whatever. And she, she had the downstairs and she rented out the, up, the two upstairs apartments to different people. And um, anyway, she, this was in her house there for years and years. And after she passed away, uh, nobody really wanted it. And I said, well, I'll take it. And, you know, and uh, I hope to restore that one of these days. If anybody's got inside information on restoring those, uh, you know, feel free to pass it along. <laughs> but it's a Zenith radio. It's got a police band, a shortwave band, and a regular band, it says on there. And it's got a lot of neat information on that dial when you get up close to the dial and read it. And, of course, it's got all those push buttons there. Um, it's a pretty cool old radio. I imagine it's from, I don't know, from the late 30s, early 40s, somewhere in there, I guess. I, mean, I, I really don't know when it was made. It might have been the 50s, for all I know. Well, anyway, that's a project for way down the road, uh, if I live long enough. <clears throat> and I'm not sure that's going to happen either. Uh, Rod Wentler is number one this morning. Carolyn Fike, number two, John Pepper. Let's move on down looking for question marks. Dottie Hildebrand, Jerry, hope and pray you're feeling better. Praying for your hands. Well, I don't feel too terribly bad. Just still don't feel like I'm clicking on all my cylinders here. Um... But I got a lot to do, and I think today, because I, you know, spent all day yesterday on that video, editing the video, I'm going to uh, try to get back on the uh, Martin House thing today and try to get that wrapped up today. Of course, I'm going to spend that hour first getting the video finished, and then hopefully I can spend the rest of the time down there working on the Martin Houses and get that working. But thank you, Dottie. I appreciate it. Um, David Tharp says, what turned... Dr. Jekyll into Mr. Hyde. It was, <laughs> it was the glue. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It probably was. Yeah, you, and you will see a few references. Just a few. Only just, just a few references. <laughs> I probably wore that subject out in this video. And, you know, I, I, that's, in fact, I was hoping to make this a contest today, and I forgot to mention it. Think of a title for this video. Now, let me give you the background of the video. Um, I had to, uh, you know, it's, it's basically, it's a fiddle that someone gave to Smiley Face Fiddle Girl. <laughs> uh, Gina Heisinger, they, someone gave the fiddle to her. 
I, uh, her name is, the gal that gave it to her is Carol. And anyway, um, uh, so that's how it started. And then, you know, it, it really wasn't playable. The strings are real high and all that. So I had, basically, it was given to me to do a setup on it. Well, when I got it, I'm going, you really can't set this thing up properly. You need to do a lot of things. So the neck angle was wrong. I had, so I'd take the neck out, had to take the fretboard off, um, fought with the hide glue all the way through on this. Um, then of course I'm setting it all up and, you know, making it play good and all that. So what would be a real good catchy title for this, you know, and, uh, keep in mind that it, it seriously, the hide glue thing was a huge issue. Everybody says, oh, it has to be hide glue so you can take it apart. I'm telling you what, I almost got the jackhammers out on this one. Um, it was bad. And anyway, uh, so can you think of a catchy title that would wrap some of that up together and uh, would be appropriate for this video? So be thinking about that and post it in the comments. And uh, if you are the winner of that uh, idea, I'll send you a CD or a set of strings or whatever you want. Um, <clears throat> this is another one of my crafts that I did. I did this probably a little later, probably the 80s. You can see flowers and uh, birds are a theme for me. My mom always loved flowers and my mom always loved birds. And I made this for her actually. And after she passed away, I reclaimed it. Whoops, and I just dropped it. That helped. Probably put a dent on it. But anyway, <clears throat> so those are the kinds of crafty things I used to like to do. Never could find time to do them after I started working in, in, in uh, full time and working on instruments in my spare time. <laughs> like everything was full time. Okay, moving on down. Um, Blair Turner, good morning, Jerry. Just got about 10 inches of snow in Calgary which was much needed to keep the igloo from melting too soon. Got to go feed the sled dogs and try <laughs> and fry up some whale blubber for breakfast. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, it's, it's funny as long as it's not true. If it's true, <laughs> I feel sorry for you. <laughs> uh, anyway. Moving on down, uh, let's see, Gary Smythe from the UK, good afternoon to you all from the sunny UK, hope you're all fit and healthy, Jerry, a friend of mine takes cannabis oil for arthritis, swears by it, yeah, 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 that's as much as I'm going to say about it. I do not agree with that at all, uh, it's, first of all, I, I totally feel Come, that it's a total cop out. Number one, that's uh, just just me. You you feel free to feel differently. I feel it's a cop out. It's just an excuse to smoke the stuff and get crazy high in your head. Second of all, I think it's only a placebo effect. And I'm telling you right now, I don't have the placebo gene at all. Zero, none, not any. So there you go. So I'm sorry. I don't mean to be mean. I'm just telling you that's the way I feel about it. I do not agree with doing drugs in any form, any shape, any kind. I don't care about, you know, not alcohol, nothing. Anything that makes you get crazy in your head, it ain't right. It ain't something you should be doing. That's my opinion, and I'll never change that opinion. Um, that's the probably the most firm opinion I have in my life is that one. And I'll, you know, if it... Loses me a bunch of viewers and a bunch of supporters. Well, I'm sorry. It's just the way I feel, and I can't change that. At least I'm honest about it. Gary Hayes. Gary Hayes, uh, uh, West Virginia Hillbilly. Jerry, keep singing the songs you have uh, wrote. They are great songs. Well, thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, moving on down. I don't see any more question marks till after we went live there. Bill Rhodes says, Good morning. And uh, Gary Hyden, no, I've skipped one. It's it scrolled. Well, it's skipped a bunch of them. It really scrolled. Man, it can scroll so fast you can't tell how far it went. Uh, Lester says, "Hope you're better." Well, like I said, I'm I'm not feeling terrible or anything. I I'm okay. Um, uh, yeah, I love that blue T-shirt. Yeah, this is this is my favorite shirt, by the way. <laughs> It's so appropriate. Uh, there have been times where I have been so confused on colors. You know, I I thought something was one color and it was totally different. What, what are some of those things? Um, 
that that I found out later in my life. You know, a lot of them were flowers and things like you know, like the the thistle plant. You know, like see, I used to cut weeds for my dad all the time. I was always cutting weeds. That was one of the main things he had me do as I was growing up was taking the Ford tractor, driving to different places and cutting weeds. I was started doing that when I was 10 years old and I was driving on the, on the roads <laughs> to the different jobs. But anyway, when you were cutting weeds, you know, I'd see these flowers, uh, well, they're thistles, and they'd have what I thought were blue flowers on them. And I always thought they were blue. Never did ever, ever dream they were a different color. Always thought they were blue. And, you know, found out that they were actually purple. <laughs> so stuff like that has happened my whole life. And I've always thought one thing, and then you find out later that it's totally something else. So this, this shirt is, <laughs> is real appropriate. Uh, Dottie says, mighty fine singing and playing. Well, thanks. It, it wasn't that, it wasn't very good. I hadn't done that song forever. And uh, it's kind of hard to do a song like that, Cold Turkey. It really is, especially without a bass. I mean, a bass really helps on a song like that. Uh, Gary Smythe from the UK. Love that blue t Oh, yeah, he read, that's the one I read. Um, and, okay, moving on down. Brian o, uh, just says the shirt is hilarious. Well, thank you. I think it is. I think it's perfect. Uh, Brian O'Grady. Hi, Jerry. Could I put a request for Bury Me Beneath the Willow if you have it? Um, we might be able to pull that off. I, I don't know if anybody in the band does it. I'll write it down. Uh, so it'd be next, next week, Thursday. Bury me beneath. I'm going to ask smiley face fiddle girl if she'll show up and, and, uh, play with us that day. Uh, since the video about her fiddle is coming out right then, it's kind of appropriate. Um, Let's see. Yeah, Bill Mumbo. Richard Thompson will be pleased, Jerry. Great song, old favorite. Yeah, Richard Thompson, and, and he, he wrote the, the Vincent Black Lightning song, as you know, or as you may know. Um, and, of course, you know, I didn't know how his version went because the only version I'd ever heard was Del McCory's version. So I didn't know where the song came from. Well, you know, it came from this English fellow, Richard Thompson. And he sings it real proper, like, you know, I, and I'm not making fun of him, please, I'm not, but it's just so different the way he does it. He, he says, said, said Red Molly to James, it's a fine motorbike. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of comes across like that. It's really a totally different song in the way that he wrote it, you know, and Del McCurry took it and bluegrassed it up, you know, but um, it's, it's a great song. It really is very well written. I mean, really, really well written. So, uh, moving on down, um, Glenn Woods, good morning, uh, uh, Scott said to tell you thanks for helping him build his guitars. Oh, okay, well you, I'm sorry you know Scott. <laughs> Scott's my brother, in case you don't know. Uh, so, so, should I send you a sympathy card? <laughs> uh, Bill Webb. I like that song. I've never heard that one. Yeah, uh, Vincent Black Lightning is a great song. You go out and listen to Del McCurry's version, of course, and Richard, Richard Thompson's version is definitely worth listening to. But if you like bluegrass, you, you gonna, you're going to want to listen to uh, Del McCurry's version. It's really, really good. It's, it's just fantastic. It's one of the best Del McCurry songs ever. Um. Bill Webb, I think you should buy the auction mandolin for prosperity since it was your first one you built. No, it wasn't the first one I built. Uh, in fact, I covered that. Um, uh, let me see if it's got a number in it. It's 11I7M, so it's the seventh mandolin. It was the 11th instrument I built in the seventh mandolin. Now, it was the first one that I carved anything in the back. So that's where you're hearing the first, probably. It was the very first one that I did any carving on. So this, and this is a rose bud rather than a full rose. So that was kind of a proof of concept idea, was to carve that to see if I could do it. And uh, I was trying to make it a little extra special for Randy, as Randy had had a double lung transplant. And like I said, he came out of the hospital, ordered 
me to build him a mandolin. And so I built that mandolin for, for, for Randy. Um, let's see. Roger Daigle Jr. It seems that you have your ducks in a row most of the time. <laughs> well, when there's only two of them, they're always in a row. <laughs> they can be anywhere and they're still in a row. <laughs> a straight line, if you will. Uh, let's see. Gary Hyden, good song, Jerry. Those fingers were working great this morning. That's a tough song. It really is a tough song. And like I said, I, I do think Gary kind of cringes every time I do it. Because <laughs> it, it's so long and it's fast, you know. I mean, it's the beat on it's really fast. The words aren't crazy fast, but the beat is fast, you know. The way Dell did it. Zappa, that's a... Oh, uh, that's a beautiful radio. Well, thank you. I think it is too. I probably have to, inc uh, you know, enlist the help of uh, Leon Pruitt, my our banjo player. He's an electrical engineer, and he knows all about stuff like that. And I might have to have him uh, get involved in the restoration of that thing one of these days. But it's going to be a ways and down the road. I mean, I've got the water wheel project i've got the addition on the shop i've got the dump truck if i get those three things done then i'm not sure what i'll do next but there's plenty of things around here to do next like i could work on that old farmhouse up there and get it ready for a rental retreat also Whew. there's a lot to do just a lot to do it's unbelievable amount to do <laughs> in fact I hate to even think about it because it's it's it starts to get depressing because there's so much that needs to be done. Um, and it scrolled again. Doggone it. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to find... Okay, yeah, I, I think I found it. Uh, Bill Webb says, Does that radio have tubes? Yes, it definitely does. It's an old radio from the... At least from the... I would say at least the 40s. It might be 50s, but... 50s would be, I know for sure, the latest. Um, it might be 40s. It might be 30s even. I really don't know. It's it's definitely old. It's got shortwave and a police band on it too. I think that's really cool. Of course, it's only AM. It's not FM. <clears throat> Chuck Heidbrenner, have a tube tester. If you need help with the radio, you will have to replace most of the capacitors. You know, I kind of knew that. And reline the stages that should do it i don't know about relining the stages i kind of know about replacing capacitors and tubes and things like that and uh i mean used to you could go to the drugstore they had tube testers at the drugstores i don't think anybody has a tube tester anymore uh, i don't know if you can buy one off of amazon or not but um <clears throat> purist says, I've got those old hide glue blues. You know, I honestly, <clears throat> I was thinking of one thing for a title of the, of the video today. I was thinking of something in the title that is meaningful. But then in the thumbnail, I was thinking of, <laughs> I probably shouldn't say it this way. But I, you know, hide glue sucks canal water and I don't care who knows it. <laughs> something like that. Hide glue sucks canal water. You know, something like that in the in the thumbnail. And it does. It just absolutely does. And and if this video don't prove it, I don't know what will. But it isn't going to change those people's minds that have their minds made up about it. There's, there's no way it'll change their minds. Plus, they charge gazillions of dollars to do the same repairs that I do for a few hundred. I mean, I'm not kidding you when I tell you they'll for what I did on this fiddle. If you took that to one of these guys, I'm not kidding you. Every bit of ten thousand dollars they're going to charge you to do this. And of course, they won't work on a quote unquote no name fiddle, so they wouldn't even work on this one probably. But if it was a, a fiddle that had some reputation, and you took it to them, I and did the exact same thing I did on this one, I guarantee you they wouldn't touch it for less than something like ten thousand dollars. And I, fiddle girl asked me how much I wanted to charge her. I said, well, the parts were about 25 bucks. If you want to pay me that, that's great. So she paid me that and then she paid me and then she gave me a gift certificate to um, uh, Harbor F Horrible Fright. <laughs> I said, wow, that's, you must have read my mind. Horrible Fright's my favorite store. So anyway, 
um, seriously, though, I'm not making that up. They, that's the kind of money those, those people charge. And hide glue is the only thing. that you, you never get them to use anything else. And, and it's because that way it will break again, and then they get to fix it again and charge you another six or $8,000. I'm not kidding you. That's what, that's, it's, it's a racket, man. <clears throat> uh, Bill Mumbo, hide, hide glue, hide the hide glue, Jerry's on the warpath. <laughs> that might be a title. Um, Gary Hyden, uh, that flower looks like an iris. Uh, yeah, yeah, that, on this one it is, yes. And the bird is a, uh, goldfinch, I think. It's just that I didn't have any good way to do that. Now, knowing what I know now, I would have used the yellow wood for the uh, for the goldfinch, but I didn't have that at the time. <clears throat> Let's see. Ronald Todd, so you think you have to use hide glue. Okay, that's a possibility of something along those lines. Glued it together, Dottie Hildebrandt. Bill Webb, hide the hide glue or I'll tan your hide. <laughs> oh, that one's kind of humorous. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Hide glue sucks canal water's just right straight to the point. <laughs> you know me, I don't beat around the bush much. I'm pretty much straight at you. Uh, we have 165 viewers right now. The Outboard Tinkerer, uh, hide... It was like that poor fellow that walked up here with that plastic Martin the other day. <laughs> I said, well, you, you do know it's plastic, right? <laughs> He's going, plastic? I thought I got a good deal on it. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of blunt. I can't help it. It's just, I just say it like I see it. <laughs> uh, Outboard Tinker says, hi, Jerry. Well, after... Dell's song Poncho and Lefty is next. Just kidding. Yeah, Poncho and Lefty. I'll have to look that up. I, I don't I, you know, I seriously don't know if that'll fit me or not. There's some songs I can't can't just get across. And it's nothing to do with the song. I mean, like I like the song. I've heard it. I know I like it. I don't know if I can do it though. I mean, there's just certain songs I just can't find a way to make them work for me, you know. Um Moving on. Let's see. Dottie, Jerry, I agree with the drug thing, but I think it's oil and you put it on your hands. Well, I've tried that stuff already. I've tried a gazillion things. In fact, I've got two bottles of that junk sitting in that drawer right now. And I put it on my hands and I don't feel any effect at all. Zero, none, not any. And I, I'm not trying to be hard-nosed about this stuff. I mean, like, I don't have the placebo gene. You could put me in one of those tests where you give a guy the real drug and you give a guy a placebo, and I will, you know, I'll be the guy in the placebo test that says it didn't do anything for me. Nothing. Not one thing. You know, and if I don't know how the other one w would be because, you know. But, but that's my point. I don't have a placebo gene. Something is, everything's black and white with me. It either freaking works or it don't. And that's in my whole life. I've said that about uh, Tylenol and ibuprofen. I, you know, everybody says, take a Tylenol, take an ibuprofen. Well, they don't work. So why take them? You know, they don't work. They're placebo. And, and there's a lot of studies out that tell you that they're placebo now too. They've, in fact, they were talking about that fairly recently. I think it was Tylenol specifically. They don't work. and They don't work for me at all. Zero, none, not any. Um, they don't help on anything. And uh, now, um, what is the one that does seem to help? At plain old aspirin seems to help. But that's about it. And then, of course, most people can't take aspirin because it eats their stomach up. Well, it don't seem to bother me at all. So I can take aspirin. Um, but it doesn't help all that much. It helps though. Um, out, uh, moving on down. Let's see. But yeah, thanks for clearing that up, Dottie. I thought he was talking about this actual smoke in the marijuana. And, you know, I do not agree with that at all. Zero, none, not any. Anything that makes you out of your head, you know, I'm sorry, but I got no sympathy for you. And I do not agree with you. It doesn't mean I don't like you. Just means I don't agree with you. In fact, the fellow that recorded here the most 
recorded all the time here. He was a pothead from where they come from. And he and I got along just fine. I really like him. He's a nice guy. But I ain't doing the pot thing. And he tried to talk me into it a bunch of times. Like, you know, he says, that'll help your hands. It'll do that. I'm sorry. Too bad. So sad. I ain't doing it. I don't care. Even if I'm on my deathbed, I'm not doing it. So that's the name of that tune. And I maybe am just stubborn about that. But that's the way I feel. Um, let's see. Gary Hayes. West Virginia. Jerry, you put the Del McCurry song out of the park. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, in fact, they'll probably ban the video. <laughs> Dell will probably protest to YouTube and they'll have it taken down, probably. Ben Boyd, uh, hide glue won't stick in an F. <laughs> I like it. I like it. <laughs> I don't know how I could tie it in with the video too well, but I like it. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Paul Akers, do you <laughs> have a jig to route guitar nut slot? Thanks. No, uh, I. most of the time I'm not actually making a slot for the nut. Most of the time I'm setting it on top of the fretboard or on top of the the flat plane, or sometimes I do set it on the angle, but then I just cut an angle to the bottom of it and I just put it. There. Well, when I say slot, in a case like that, the slot would be made automatically by the end of the fretboard and the end of the veneer that's on the peg head. So I make the slot that way, um, but I, that's the only time I have a slot is, is the veneer itself makes the slot with the end of the fretboards, but I don't actually cut a a slot, generally speaking. Now, having said that, I still sometimes will trim up the uh, veneer to make it fit the nut better or whatever. <clears throat> Bill Webb, a pink shirt story you told. A pink shirt story you told. Oh, yeah, that story. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I work. As you, most of you know, I work for AT&T, Southwestern Bell, SBC. I was in the headquarters most of the time. And uh, so I worked downtown in the headquarters building. And uh, my wife always bought my clothes. I never went shopping for clothes. I shouldn't say never. I probably didn't go shopping for clothes more than three times in my whole life. Nowadays, I'll go and buy a pair of blue jeans or a, a t-shirt or something like that, but that's it. I mean, like, I don't shop for clothes. So anyway, my wife always bought my clothes. And uh, so, you know, and every day it was the same old thing. It was, you know, white shirt and some kind of, I had, a, I had three or four, maybe four or five different suits that I wore. And um, anyway, so I'd put on my white shirt and go to work every day. Well, this particular day, uh, like, you know, I think I got on the van pool and the first lady that saw me goes, oh, I like that shirt. I'm thinking, just a typical white shirt. That's, thank you. You know, I didn't think anything of it. I just said, thank you. And so then like a little later in the morning, somebody said, oh, I love that shirt. I go, oh, well, thank you. And I'm thinking, this, this shirt, maybe it's got a different kind of cut or a different collar or something. And I'm looking at it, trying to think, I guess. <laughs> so... So I, you know, I, I'm seriously not knowing what they're talking about. I have not a clue, not zero, none, not any. And I'm going, I wonder why they think this shirt's so cool. So, you know, another compliment or two throughout the day. And then I get on the van again at, that night and a different lady says, oh, I like that shirt. And I said, okay, stop the truck. <laughs> I said, What's going on here? I, at least a dozen ladies today have told me they like this shirt. What's what's so unique about this white dress shirt? I mean, I've never, you know, and they go, white? It's pink. <laughs> and I went, pink? Are you kidding me? I had no clue. I had no clue. So when I got home, I was, uh, well, I didn't get mad at her, but <laughs> I was, it was a little bit, uh, you know, weird to, uh, have gone all day long thinking it was a white shirt and it turned out it was pink. And I had the same kind of exact same kind of thing happen uh, on my dress shoes. Now, 
I did typically buy my own dress shoes, you know, and I would go to a different store, whatever. Well, at this particular time, and I'm not a fad person, but every guy downtown is wearing these, I don't know what you call them, wingtip shoes, something like that. I don't remember what they're called. I could give a rip. But anyway, there's this particular shoe, and it's got that little design on the toe, and it's got the little holes in it, you know, and whatever. So I'm at, uh, <clears throat> where was I? Well, I'm at Famous Bar downtown walking, and I'm going looking for a pair of these shoes, you know. And uh, so uh, they were like, I don't remember now, like $185. And this was back in the 90s. And I'm going, gee whiz, that's ridiculous. There's no way I'm going to pay $185 for a pair of shoes. You know, and so I, I didn't buy them. Well, so then on my way home, I thought, well, I'll stop at this shoe store. You know, after I got out of the van pool, and then I'm, there's a shoe store on the way home. So I stopped there and went in. They had the exact pair. It was $95. They were on a closeout or something. It said closeout, you know. So I thought, perfect, you know. So I take them, they were exactly my size, everything. So I take them up to the checkout, and the little girl, she's probably about 18. I don't know. Maybe she's older than that, but or younger than that, I don't know. But anyway, she looks up at me and she looks at the shoes and she had this weird look on her face. I mean, like it was really a weird look. It was like, you know, like like that. And she looked down and she didn't, she didn't say nothing. But she did that like twice. And I'm thinking, well, what is she doing that? <laughs> so I take them out. And I, so I get home and I tell my wife that. And I said, I said these shoes, I said, uh, Famous and Bar had these shoes for $185. And I stopped here and I got them for 95 bucks. She's going, well, they're really nice. Uh, they're nice shoes, but you won't wear them. And I said, what do you mean I won't wear them? I just bought them. <laughs> She's going, well, you're not going to wear them. <laughs> I said, why is that? She goes, they're purple. <laughs> I thought they were black. They look totally black to me. But anyway, so I, that's probably the main reason right there why I don't buy my own clothes. <clears throat> anyway, let's see. Moving on. We got to get through this. Um, <laughs> quit, quit getting me off on these side tangents. <laughs> Daddy says... Uh, I've even heard WD-40 works. Yeah, I've tried that too. That doesn't work. It doesn't work for me. I, I Seriously, in fact, I've done that a lot with WD-40, and it doesn't do nothing. I just... Anyhow. <laughs> DE says, Heidi, whoa. <laughs> That's not too bad. That's not too bad. Um, <laughs> Heidi, whoa. Uh, moving on. Yeah, Mike Jones is talking about doing the weed thing. I'm not into it, but uh, let's see. Uh, stubborn hide glue must have been mule glue. <laughs> that one's, there's a little ring there. That that one sort of kind of rings. Um, yeah, they must have made this hide glue out of a mule, <laughs> out of an old mule. I should have said that in the video is what I should have said. That's a good line, actually. Dang, I wish I would have said that in the video. <laughs> Maybe well, it's not too late. I could go in and put uh, words in there on the screen. I could say they must have made this glue out of an uh, out of an old mule because it is sure stubborn. Yeah. Well, there you go. Might do that. I might do that. So you might see your comment in the in the video there. Uh, let's see. Uh, Rod Wintler, my hobby for many many years has been restoring old radios both electrically and aesthetically i can provide information if you ever get around to the zenith well thanks rod i might have to talk to you about that down the road i uh yeah i, I would like to make it nice i would like to make it workable um i'd like to put it back in sort of like new condition if i could um mostly just to leave it to the kids, you know, to grandkids or whatever, because it was my grandmother's <clears throat> radio. D E, I love your bird and flower artwork. I love drawing and painting flowers as well. Cool. Bill Webb, oh my mistake. I thought it was the first one you made. I still think you should keep it. 
Well, I can't keep them all. I do already have quite a few. I've got one instrument for each grandkid and my kids. And that's kind of enough. <laughs> um, if I have any more than that, then everybody's going to be fighting over the extra ones or whatever. Uh, Paul Akers. Trash X. Trash X. Can't quite put that one with it. I right off the top of my head. Uh, <clears throat> Milan Tomb says, we're the same age. I've forgotten all about the tube testers. Paul Akers, trashed a new gas can, sucks canal water, spill gas every time I use it. You are so right. Oh, yeah, th those gas cans absolutely suck canal water. There's no... The guy that even thought that up, whoever that was, I'm sure he's from California. Sorry, California friends. Um, it had to be. Uh, it's got to be another one of those stupid laws or rules or regulations that came from there. Oh, and by the way, skipping off of that subject to the next one. He, uh, Mike Morgan put out a video. I didn't put a link in this one. I should. But Mike Morgan of Morgan uh, Outdoors with the Morgans, you, you could... You know, you just search for it in YouTube, Outdoors with the Morgans. His most recent video he put out, you know, do I think this guy's a know-all, be-all, wise man? Not necessarily, but he's pretty smart. He, he, he does his homework. He generally is on the right track when he says stuff. And basically what he's saying is if you want a vehicle, you know, like especially like a large truck, like a diesel truck especially, or a big, at least a big one-ton type truck, or three-quarter size truck, or any of those bigger trucks. If you're in the market for one of those, you better get it while the getting's good. And uh, Mike Morgan was talking about how the government just put into effect, it's something with the Biden administration, and I'm not even really picking on the Biden administration. I don't care for them, but I don't care for any politicians, so it's not anything particular pointed at them. Um, but anyway, something came through that uh, for every, you know, large truck like that that they manufacture or gas vehicle they manufacture, I don't know the exact rules. Uh, he does lay it out pretty good in the video. Um, so you might want to watch it. Um, anyway, uh, for every one of those that they manufacture, they're going to have to make X number of electric vehicles or non-gas vehicles of some sort. And, you know, first of all, the, the, I'm, not, I'm not opposed to electric vehicles. If I was in a particular situation, I'd probably have one, but I'm not in that situation. Out here, it would just make no sense to have an electric vehicle. You're too far away from charging stations, and, you know, you, most of the th trips that I take are hours long, you know, and it just makes no sense. It takes eight times longer to charge an electric vehicle than it does to fill up a gas uh, tank. Um, and, and that's being generous eight times. Um, so the point is it, uh, if, if you want a real truck, you know, you better get it now because with that, ha uh, going into effect, that's going to drive the prices of those kinds of trucks way sky high. Cause they're, they, they already report that they're losing money in the electric, electric vehicles. People aren't buying them. Number one. And number two, they're expensive. They're real heavy. Uh, there's all kinds of problems with them. And, uh, you know, I, I shouldn't even be talking about the subject because I'm not that knowledgeable on it. But Mike laid it out pretty clear. And like I said, if you are in that market, you probably ought to go ahead and get it done because the prices are going to go sky high on those things because they're going to have to raise the prices on those to offset their losses on the electric vehicles that they have to, that they're forced to produce. And uh, it's... Uh, it ain't pretty. It, 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 it ain't pretty at all. It's kind of like the gas can thing. It's another one of these stupid laws that nobody's thought through, ha hasn't thought it out at all, and uh, it causes more problems than it fixes by a long stretch, by a very long stretch. I'm not a political kind of guy, but stuff like that is just stupid. It ain't political. It's stupid. <clears throat> Michael 2X. Thank you for playing. I'm an old dirt farmer for me yesterday. You're sure welcome. Thanks for asking. 
Ronald Todd, thumbs up. Everybody, click a thumbs up if you would. If I haven't offended you too much, please click a thumbs up. <laughs> uh, Zappa, Jerry, do a Google search on Zenith 30s radios. You will see a couple of which look very similar. Yeah, I have searched on it before. It, it's been a while. I haven't looked... I just saw it out there today, and I thought it'd be interesting to show you. But honestly, I haven't looked at it in years. But uh, uh, years ago, probably 10 or 12 years ago, I did do a lot of searching on it and look, looking for those things. Uh, uh, Bill Webb, I almost referenced canal water, but I was trying to be nice. <laughs> the, can, uh, can you guys play the old home place? Yeah, I do that one. I could do that. I've never, I've never really met the Dillards much. I met one of them, I think, one time in passing. Dean Webb, maybe. I can't remember. But I did uh, meet uh, the bass player's wife and played music with her a number of times. And uh, I knew his name. I, I, it's on the tip of my tongue. I can't think of it. I know his name, but I can't think of it. Uh, I'm talking about the... Uh, the, the group from Salem, they, they were the darlings on the Andy Griffith show, uh, the Dillards. Um, yeah, I can't think of their names. i just terrible with names. <clears throat> Let's see. But they're the ones that wrote the old home place is why I even brought all that up. Okay, let's see. Mitch Jane is the guy that wrote the song. Mitch Jane. He was the bass player, and I, I met his wife and played music with her a couple of different times, and I think it was after he passed away. <clears throat> Chris Connor, what do you think of fish glue? I've never used it. I don't know anything about it, so I really can't comment. Says, I like the t-shirt, although not colorblind. <laughs> Uh, Jeff Pierce, he's laughing. Um, ND Rough Rider, he restores old tube radios all the time on his channel and may be able to give you a lot of info restoring it. Okay, who is the he? ND Rough Rider. Okay, well... Uh, Gordon Nagy, good morning. Okay, well, that's the end of it, guys. And uh, we're probably way over time by now anyway. 8.52. So I think I'm going to let that be it. I'm going to try to get that video finished editing. Um, I might throw that one line in there about the stubborn mule into the, into the video. I'm not sure I'll use it on the title, but it's pretty good line there where I'm struggling. So uh, anyway... <laughs> um, I tell you what, for, for giving me that line, uh, send me an email and I'll send you a CD or a set of strings. Just name what you want. If you want a CD, uh, I have a gospel album and I have an all original album. And uh, that's all I really have at, the, at this point in time. And or I can send you a set of guitar strings or mandolin strings or banjo strings if you want, whatever you want. Anyway, moving on down, um, I'm going to call that the end of this. So thank you all for being here. We will see you on Monday, if not before. Yeah, yeah.